Should you start a vlog, blog, or podcast? Meaning, is that the right fit for you? Does everyone need to have one? And what should you publish? Video, writing, or maybe audio? All right, everybody, we are back with episode 304 of the Integrative Health Coach Success Podcast. I'm Dr. Steve Cabral, board certified doctor of naturopathy, founder of the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute. Excited to get into today's topic, which is direct from one of our YouTube viewers and followers and subscribers. So we're excited uh, that every single day, we or I should say each week, we're publishing our videos of the podcast over on YouTube. And the reason I mention that, because that is pertinent to today's topic is should you start a vlog, blog, or podcast? Meaning, is that the right fit for you? Does everyone need to have one? And what should you publish? Video, writing, or maybe audio? So we touched on this a little bit in the past. For those of you who have been longtime listeners of the Integrative Health Coach Success Podcast, of course, we appreciate you. Uh, but I wanted to revisit this. I wanted to revisit this in 2024 because what we're seeing right now is a little bit different than we were maybe two years ago. So if you think about it, and you've kind of watched YouTube or watched videos for some time, there was a lot more kind of daily vlogging. That's basically kind of doing a view, um, a video each and every day of your life, kind of documenting the journey. And it's changed a little bit. You don't see as much of that on YouTube. What you see right now is highly curated niches. And this is actually going to fall across each one of these different media. So let me just step back for a moment. Writing a blog is basically an article, right? So you write an article, maybe there's some photos in there, but it's a well-written, curated blog where people actually want to come over there and they want to read information. So let's pick one topic here today. Let's just go with thyroid. So let's say that you are an expert on helping people with low thyroid. So you could write a blog on that, which would be a written post, maybe it's 1,500 or 2,000 words, and it goes through a particular topic within the niche of thyroid. So not everything on one particular day, and I'll get to that in just a moment. So on one day, it might be a specific heavy metal that affects the thyroid, such as arsenic or maybe aluminum. Okay, another day, it's on one specific mineral that if you don't have it, you can't convert uh, to usable iodine, and that might be selenium. And then there's another day, and it's um, how intestinal permeability or leaky gut also affects the thyroid, and then how maybe cortisol affects the thyroid. So you have all these different frameworks as to the thyroid, what foods are best for the thyroid, what, what foods are worse for the thyroid. Um, so all of these different, you have all these great topics. And the thing is, you can write about it, nothing wrong with that at all, amazing. You could do a podcast, which is audio, about that particular topic, and then there is also a video or just vlog, however you want to look at it. Vlogging is a little bit different, but let's just say a video, right? So you can do written, you can do audio, or you can do video. And video is a combination essentially of the audio and video. What I want to share with you is this, that there is no one best way to do it, but there is the amount of reach that you will receive for better or for worse. So the more that you do towards the latter, which was the video and audio, the more reach you will have. So you can put clips from that video. Every, each and every day I do a 15-minute podcast for the Cabral Concept. Well, you can pull out 60 seconds to 90 seconds a day. And you can put that up then on social media. And you can put it up on YouTube. You can put your whole video, right? Your whole video podcast up on YouTube if you want. And... That is going to allow you to reach the greatest number of people possible. Now, I say that with a caveat, not necessarily the most qualified, but the greatest reach. When you do a podcast, that podcast is going to have a little bit less of a reach because you're going to be able to get it up on iTunes and Spotify. But no matter what, you still need to send people towards it, right, to listen to it. And then a blog, what you can do is you can put a snippet of that blog on social media, whether it be Facebook or it might be Instagram, and you can send people for the full article on your website. And that works great as well. Now, 
I will say people who are willing to read a 2000 word article are some of the most qualified people out there. So putting articles on your website related to your niche is one of the most overlooked and bypass thing online now. Because we see the bright, shiny things or like what gets all the fanfare. Maybe it's like writing a book or starting uh, your own video channel or whatever it is. All those are great. But I can tell you a highly curated uh, blog of one new article every week to every two weeks on a particular niche will get people coming back to read that. And although the traffic, meaning just the number of people coming to your website or your blog, will not be as great, they will be more qualified clients. So let me give you an example. Maybe on YouTube, one out of every 10,000 people that see your video, or one every 1,000 people is maybe qualified, right? As YouTube can be dispersed across so many different people. And I'm just using these as random numbers. And maybe one out of 500 on a podcast, since it's a little bit more curated, uh, might be qualified. But it might be one out of every 100 people that comes to your blog is more qualified. Meaning they specifically left their social media platform, right? They left YouTube, they left Instagram, they left Facebook, they left TikTok, they left whatever it was, and they came to your site. Not an aggregated content site, but they came to yours. Now they're solely focused on you. Do you see how there's different? It's different because they're saying, okay, I'm all in on learning about thyroid, low thyroid. Oh, this person just taught me what mineral I might be missing. And then there's another article, because I'm, I'm a captive audience, right? There's nobody, there's nobody else on your website. It's just you. Oh, the next article it shows me here, I might want to read about the, the worst foods for my thyroid, gluten and maybe some dairy, maybe things like that. Okay, and then there's another one that shows me uh, a heavy metal that I might be exposed to. And then a lab test that I might be able to take to see if I've been exposed to that. So if you, what, you're, what I'm saying is, even if you have a podcast or a vlog, you can always send people to your website for a highly curated article. And I don't want people to overlook that. Now, you don't necessarily need to be a masterful writer. I'm not saying that at all. Uh, but what you can do is state the question a typical client would have, right? That's how you make content in general. A client might say, Oh, they, they have low thyroid and they ask why. And then you as a practitioner can just go through, like literally I have my journal here beside me and I can just write in this journal on line paper, there's probably 30 lines. I can just go through all the different issues with thyroid and I, obviously I can fill at least 30, right? I just took you through some and you can break up each individual one to be an individual article. Well, even if you did an article every other week, that's a year's worth of material, those 30 topics, right? So this is something that you absolutely can do. Another nice thing is that if you do the podcast, you could get the transcript from the podcast and because now, so we used to use a company called Rev, Rev.com. And for, I think it was a dollar a minute. So if I had a 15 minute podcast, they could transcript that for $15. And you might say, well, that's a lot of money. And I don't necessarily disagree at all, especially if you're doing a daily podcast. Um, but what you can do now is you can use AI to go from voice to text. It's pretty amazing. The other thing that you can do, this is just a little iPhone hack, is you can literally put your iPhone next to your recorder and put it in the notes app and just press the voice button. Now, it won't come out perfect, but you can just go back then and edit. So you can actually be doing a vlog, a podcast, and then getting the article, at least the semblance of it written at the same time. But really what I wanted to share with you is that there's not necessarily a best way of getting your content out to people. Because at the end of the day, if you're just doing it to try to game the system or hack the system, it's never going to really work out. People aren't going to feel that energetic connection. So what I recommend is doing what you feel most comfortable with. If you're better at writing, you can write and put those posts online. You can use Canva and other software to make the post beautiful, right? And then you can, you can have your image, then in the caption, you can write this really nice article or, or part of an article, and then again, send them to your website for the, the full part. And if you love to be able to speak, but don't like or don't have the time to get yourself all prepped for video, no problem. You can do a podcast, you can do audio, and you can set your audio 
to be um, part of your social media posts as well. Nothing wrong with that. I did that for the first, what, five years of my podcast or six years. I regret not doing video. I will tell you that. I do, I do regret not doing that because of the reach that you can have if you put it on YouTube. I just started doing video a couple of years back. Um, and actually, I started in the beginning, but I wasn't able to keep up with it. So again, I have no regrets because I couldn't do it. I was running a practice. I was already working like 70 to 80 hours a week. And then if I had to stop and set up video every time, I wouldn't be able to do it. I was finding half hour blocks between working with wellness clients that I could do a podcast. And that's what I could do at the time. So I'm always telling people to do what you can with what you have at this moment in time. It can change a year from now, but get started now. Get started posting now. If it's one article a month, that's okay. Then write other snippets on social media and keep sending people to that one article just once a month. So the best place to get started is what you feel most comfortable with. And the reason I say that is because once you get a win in one area, you'll feel more comfortable in the next. Meaning like I felt more comfortable having done audio to then go to video. It's not dramatically different. I just have to, I always had my white shirt on, but I had to just be camera ready, meaning like I had the camera set up. And so now to make it even easier for myself, because my schedule is not necessarily less busy. I don't work 70, 80 hours anymore, um, but I have my camera set up right at my desk, exactly where it needs to be. I have the battery charged. I've got a light that I just the click for the on switch and I'm ready to go. So no matter what you do, my greatest recommendation is to write down and schedule it. So this is the day and this is the time I write the blog. This is the day or this is the time I do a short script for my podcast. And then you go right in your podcast. Better to write that script. Just another little pro tip. Write the script for your podcast or I just do, I typically do three to five bullets. That's all that I do. I like to speak off the top of my head. If you don't like to do that, that's okay. Um, and I like to do it right before the show. And the reason is, so I have all my topics, but I like to just do those three to five bullets so that it's fresh in my mind. If I were to write the three to five bullets a week uh, ago, I would then have to spend basically the same amount of time doing that again. So I like to just batch that. And so what you'll want to do is maybe, maybe dedicate an hour once a week in order to be able to do that one content piece that you want to put out for the week. Uh, one article, one how-to video, one of whatever you feel would be greatly beneficial. And remember, they don't have to be super long. And for the most part, they shouldn't be long. People are busy. They want to be able to read an article in five minutes or so, uh, 10 minutes maybe. They want to be able to listen to a podcast in 15, 20 minutes or so. Even the long podcasts that are like two hours long, a lot of people don't even finish them. So what I prefer to do, it's not the only answer, is to give people content and hopefully valuable information that they can continue to come back to day after day or when they fit, feel that it's a fit for them. So obviously there's lots more to talk about on this topic, but I wanted to answer this question. And of course, if you have any questions as well, feel free to leave those in the comments. We're always reading the comments. We're always turning them into shows for the Integrative Health Coach Success Podcast. So thanks so much, everybody. Hope the show was helpful. All the details, all the big takeaways from today's show are at ihp.coach slash 304. Take care.